Have you had too much time on your hands recently? Did you maybe use it to work on yourself? As you saw, the Burning Crusade is coming back, your old nostalgia kicked in. Doesn't matter if you ignored it or not for classic vanilla, but 3 till TBC is something you never get over. Okay, so at this point you have decided to start playing. You son of a I'm in! First step achieved. Reward yourself by glancing through a window outside where your friends might be passing, as that might be the last time in a while, as you're gonna be spending time inside from now on. A lot of time. Sweet, moving on. Next step. Pick your class you want to associate yourself with. I'll give you some rough pros and cons about each class and spec available in the Burning Crusade expansion. In order not to discriminate against any class, I'll have the same criteria, but I'll look over the racials. Is it a warrior? Do you like taking a stick while walking and just wave it around yourself while no one is watching you? It might be it. I'll assume you will want to raid with a warrior. It's not a bad idea, as there are 2-3 to three warriors per raid minimum. One protection warrior, one fury and one arms warrior. Fury can be omitted for any other melee class, even a rogue, believe it or not. Arms is more for support and less for DPS, while fury is a DPS machine. Just like that. Protection Warrior is one of the most sought after tanks, but then again, in this expansion there are only 3 possible tanking specs, so you take what you get. Without self healing abilities, a warrior is not perfect for any kind of farming by killing on its own. So gathering profession is fine for warriors next to crafting professions to keep up with your costly repair bills. CC is quite weak, but not non-existent. Protection Warriors have decent stun, and warriors in general have hamstring to slow down a target. Still, with 3 possible specs, warriors aren't as versatile. You can be a melee and from that you can be either tank or a DPS. Coming from classic vanilla where warriors were highly overpowered compared to other melee DPS classes. There will be a lot of people playing warriors, so it's up to you to decide. Gearing is quite simple and straightforward. Plate and melee pieces at start. Upgrade to leather DPS pieces later on for DPS and more plate for protection. Oh dude, 4 strength, 4 stam, leather belt. Ah, uh, Level 18? <laughs> Last thing left to do is a PvP. Yell at people and smack them with big two-handers. If you like getting angry whispers after every battleground, PvP warrior is for you. Let's see about Rogue. First things first, are you a person that likes annoying others? Do you like going through life with the minimum effort? Is yellow your favorite color? Do you like making other players leave the game? If so, the next question is, do you like PvP? If no, then you are in Rogue expansion, most probably. Rogues are classic melee DPSers. And in the Burning Crusade, they are still just that. It can replace a Fury Warrior in red composition for a little bit more support and less DPS. Situational interrupts and different kinds of poisons will surely come in handy, but more for trash than boss fights, especially in endgame content. Just like Warriors, Rogues in TBC don't have self-heal, so first aid it is. It's a gathering profession where Rogues shine, as you can stealth through and steal nodes without wasting time on killing mobs around. Rogue CC is quite formidable just like in vanilla, stun locks are still there so calm down. What rogues are missing in this expansion still, well in every expansion, is versatility. You can be DPS and you can be just DPS. I'll give you a warning still, there will be a lot of rogues coming from classic. A lot. So brew enough poisons. Easy gearing, easy pvping, easy life rogue. You heard that the highest DPS output has a warlock, so you wanna know more about it? Well yes, but no. Surely, where you can AoE a lot, you will do just good, but if there is a hunter around you on no AoE fight, you will have to take the second place. At least in the most of the boss fights. What makes Warlock better than Mages is a mana tab, which allows you to not worry about mana as long as you have a healer available. Warlocks are bringing a lot of useful spells to raid, nice support for shadow casters and casters in general, very high DPS output, summons, health stones, soul stones and so on. But the big downside to that is having to have a lot of soul shards, which you will have to farm for yourself. There will be a PvE Warlock in depth video coming soon, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button in order not to miss it. Not the best farming class in raid spec, but in SLSL spec, Warlock can farm for days, as Drain Life ability can heal you up fast while dealing damage. There's also Death Coil, instant heal combined with the CC aspect of it. Beside Death Coil, there's also Fear and AoE Fear, Banish and Enslave. So yeah, Warlocks are quite strong CC class. It's never a bad idea to have a Warlock alt, if not main, due to its usefulness, such as summoning yourself somewhere, or soul stoning yourself, or farming in SLSL, and so on. 
When it comes to Warlock, versatility is pure caster DPS class, but Warlock can be a tank to fire and shadow caster bosses. For that, Warlock uses special talent, resistance and stamina gear, and searing pain. In TBC, you will feel quite threat capped as a Warlock, but there is a soul shatter to help you with that. Will a lot of players play it? I'd say above average amount. Private servers were overtuning the content to point where the raids were forced to stack as many warlocks and hunters as they could, which might follow up on retail servers as well. But in average raid setup, fully optimized, there still can be up to 3 warlocks at least. So if you're playing for gear, be prepared for Q to get the items your heart desires. Gearing is easy and straightforward though. In PvP, warlocks are really really fun. I suggest you try any version of it, especially SLSL. You will be welcome in a raid as a shaman, as optimal number is up to 5. Beside bloodlust, shamans are bringing a huge variety of useful totems. One thing you might or might not mind about shaman is having to recast totems, but that's honestly the easy part of the work. What you have to do is do the shaman quests for those totems in the first place. Apart from being an awesome healer, you will be an under average caster and a melee DPS. Depending on what you decide to play of course. My suggestion is, don't play enhanced shaman if it's your first time playing a shaman, apart from leveling of course. None shamans back in DBC is gonna be above average except restoration even in capable hands and each requires some training and grinding to become good at it. This is the first class that can actually do damage and self heal for a nice amount, so Shami is not a bad farmer. Having 3 viable specs all desired in raid as a melee, caster and healer makes Shaman very versatile. So leveling up a Shaman could be a good idea for TBC. I intend to main one this time too. Earthbind Totem is awesome for slowing down targets while kiting or running away, combined with the Frost Shock which causes a lot of threat and slows down target as well. But that's as far as Shami CC goes. Shaman is fun to gear as well, it requires a lot of balancing. I have a shaman in depth video coming soon as well, so stick around if shaman sounds like your top pick. As for PvP, enhancement with two-hander is by far the most fun to play. Clotis and even rogues will just get splat in one shot if RNG blesses you with the blessing of chain wind fury proc. Hunter, the ultimate chat DPS machine. If you like to brag about three count numbers, this is a class for you. You'll be winning fights all the time. Speed leveling, easy. Solo elite quests, pff, piece of cake. Firing machine, you. Not to over aggroing? Impossible. Like button? Smash. No, but seriously, you gotta be the player that has an actual pet at home. If you do, pause the video, go feed it and tell it how good boy or girl it is. <laughs> Alright, now that we are back and pets got petted, let's continue. First of all, Hunter is a physical counterpart to Warlock. And beside high DPS output, another similarity is extra bag slot needed for ammo, just like Warlock's soul shards. So yeah, in TBC, for biggest you play a hunter. Optimized raid setup uses about 3 hunters, 2 beast mastery and 1 survival support. Those two specs are viable so a hunter isn't really versatile. If you cannot fit into one of those two spots in a raid, there is no raid for you. Since hunter is really really easy to level up, there might be a lot of hunters in TBC at start. Reason is also that as previously mentioned, hunters are really good at solo farming many expensive materials. Send a pet in and heal it. Gearing up hunters is not too hard either, requires a lot of agility and in the endgame gear slap a lot of armor penetration. And you're GG. Aside from bag slot for quiver ammo pouch, you gotta carry some food for your pet as always. In terms of CC, hunters have freezing and frost traps, one of which is useful in case of a big tank pulls, and the other one CCs only one target. And there is concussive shot, a daze like ability which slows down the enemy. Oh, and also fear beast is situationally used to scare beast type monsters. I like hunters, but the choice is yours. Mage players are ice on Discord, even though they are 99% probably playing the fire spec in game. They are always firm and serious, or at least sound like that. If the mage is a raid leading, expect Gordon Ramsay raid atmosphere. Get it? Cause they yell and make cookies? I'll see myself out. Mages are still very useful in raids. Above average DPS, second most OP AoE is gonna be worth it after all the carry they receive in dungeons. Also, you can stack up to two mages in a raid setup. Beside DPS, mages bring some of the best CC and biscuits to raid. Apart from polymorph, frost spells can root or slow down opponents. As a mage, you can conjure yourself water or food, so you never have to carry or buy it. In TBC, mage DPS is higher from Fire Tree, but mana sustain could be very weak without Shadow Priest in the group. Mages could struggle in longer fights if you fall out of your rotation. Even in short fights you gotta pop mana gems or even pots every now and then. What this class is missing is versatility, as it can only be DPS, pure DPS in 3 different specs. In tier 5, with tier 5 set bonus, arcane would be more viable but that's about it. Downside is 3 different kinds of regions you will have to carry. One for portals, one for teleportations, and a lot of arcane powder for arcane intellect and biscuits. 
Garing is a bit less complicated than a Warlock, as the spell hit cap is lower and easier to hit. That being said, with Mage being superb in vanilla, there will be a lot of mages coming to DBC, so make your choice. As for PvP, mages are amazing, with their frost pack that provides a ton of CC. Paladin in TBC is highly versatile and calm by nature, very respected among their friends' community, before they started spending loads of time playing World of Warcraft and forsaking their friends for that reason. If you are not playing female blood elf, you are doing it wrong. Oh, and yeah, bubble plus hearthstone is legit useful macro. If you disagree, then you belong with the rogue kind of players. Let's go to its roots. Why did you start playing Paladin? Because your friend told you that it's easy to level? Here's a hint for you. Your friend is not your friend. Unless he leveled a priest in a party with you. Process of leveling a paladin is literally running up to a mob, right clicking and then alt tab to watch YouTube. But it's true about versatility. Protodents are quite useful in early game for dungeons tanking and overall for trash tanking in raids. But in most boss fights you are next to useless apart from occasional dispel and rebuff for people who died mid fight and got combat res. Holy paladin is interesting as a healing spec. But in depth, it's only used for big fat heals on tanks. One per raid is more than enough. And as last, Retribution, which is also unique in a raid, it's almost a must-to-have role in a raid group. Due to nice support. Retribution is also the most fun for me in the endgame, as it gets above average in DPS output and is quite interesting gear-wise. Downside of Paladin is constant rebuffing and carrying a lot of regions, which luckily stack up to 300 or something. And as a raid setup only requires one of each spec in raid, you might want to reconsider that. Their CC arsenal is bad to say the least. Stun with longer cooldown and repentance which is sadly only talent retribution tree. Will many players play paladin? It's hard to say. There will be a lot of blood elves on start of TBC as blood elf paladin is best in slot for protagonist spec. Priest is for people who like to help other people. Maybe they are even doctors or medical personnel in real life. It's honestly the player class I respect the most. COH or Holy Priest have if not highest than one of the highest HPS output out of all healing specs in TBC. Per raid there will be up to 2 or 3 priests, one of them being Shadow Priest. Being the best healer of the expansion has its drawbacks, such as going out of mana soon in healing intensive fights and generating a lot of threat. I suggest starting GoFundMe for your repair bill, as you will be dying a lot. On the other hand, Shadow Priest is under average caster DPS, mainly throughout TBC expansion. It has awesome support though, as there is a minor replenishment for every spell he casts for his whole group and increased shadow and spell damage taken for the whole raid. Mind Control is one of the CC abilities only a priest has. It has many fun and interesting uses. I won't spoil anything for you, I'll just say use every opportunity to try it out. Shadow Priest is also really good as a farmer, with nice offensive bursts and heals of course. I don't think many players will opt for Priest because of low sustainability and complexity of spells. Apart from shadow and healing spec, there isn't any other spec viable at least. So that's where Priest's versatility stops. You could try and go for a Disc Priest just for fun, but DPS is low and sustainability is as good as an Arcane Mage without bunch of intellect. Could be fun in the PvP if you are into that. Gearing a Priest can be fun, but it's mainly spamming Spirit for Holy and Haste for Shadow. Even though I respect them as players, there is nothing more satisfying than melting a Priest in PvP. I suggest you try it. Straight is my personal favorite in TBC expansion. Most ultimate and complete class. Almost no friendly, but not idiot proof sadly. Leveling a druid is so smooth as if an invisible hand is turning down the difficulty level as you progress through. Tanking, check. DPSing, check. Tanking and DPSing in the same fight, check. Spell casting, check. Healing, double check. Free mount, triple check. If druid is not your main and a first character ever, then it's probably your first alt, as you saw how ridiculously OP it is. It can hit and run fast, heal, even go stealth and melt you with mangle crits and then just shapeshift to a bear and takes almost no damage. To hell, it even has its own AoE. Druid potential and versatility is limitless and interesting. For example, in shapeshift you're immune to polymorph, but your type is no longer humanoid. It's beast, so hunters can fear you or other druids can hibernate you. But there is one ability that rises shapeshift to druid over all other classes, even over farming hunter machines, and that's herb farming in flight form. Apart from that, Kitty is awesome for farming materials as it has nice burst damage and druid as a druid can heal itself. Feral tanks are the best threat tanks out there in TBC. In my opinion, the best tank for most of the fights in the expansion. Apart from some bosses abilities which require protection warriors to block, like sheer ability on Illidan. If you're not needed as a tank, you can just go kitty and do average DPS following the hardest rotation of the expansion. I can't even start explaining as I never understood it myself, but for awesome kitty DPS you gotta swap some talents around and get a little bit different gear. Restoration Druid is a beast in right hands. Upkeep of constant hots on 3 to 4 targets that constantly take damage will surely put Druid on top or near top of the healing meters. 
And as the last viable spec, Boomkin is best friend to Warlocks. Although only one parade is needed, it's a DPS that has one button spam but still quite low output. Best in slot geared Boomkin can be competitive but nowhere near Warlocks or Mages. You can say best support class. Boomkin was my main for a long time and I promised my Warlock friend I will come to his wedding dressed as an owl. As for downsides, well, I'd like to hear some down in the comments if there are any, because I can't see any. And that's all for the video. As I mentioned, more in-depth class-by-class videos are coming soon, starting off with a hunter. Feel free to subscribe in order not to miss on those. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.